right, well, we're staring at an Argo, which means it's yet another Argo episode. Now, if all you guys have not seen the other episodes, don't stress. These are a bit like The Simpsons in that uh, you can watch each episode from start to finish without having to have too much prior knowledge of the other ones. I'll try my best to explain where I'm at. Anyway, in the last episode, um, or maybe the episode before, I got out and I was floating around in some moderately shallow but open waters with a little bit of current and a little bit of wind and I kept floating away so I decided I needed an anchor so I've got this little baby anchor I think I shouldn't sacrifice too much weight it also means when I come to do a military vehicle event that's uh, coming up in 2021 now because it's been or 2022 it's been postponed um, this will allow me to get some um, registration as a watercraft which is mandatory for the insurance. So that will be part of the gear that I need. And I'm probably gonna register this in Victoria anyway. Now, a um, couple of other things. I have found a low pressure gauge. <coughs> That's important, aside from preventing me from choking. Um, this has been sitting for a little bit and I'm not sure what any of the tire pressures are. The front tire pressure was really low at one point. So, um, I did air it up without checking with a gauge. So I want to get these two to seven and these two to five PSI. Um, and I have to move this and put it back on the trailer today because I have a big delivery coming next week and I need to have make some room on the lawn for my big delivery. Um, it's also got more than the standard number of wheels as well. Um, and I need to get that guy out of the hole as well. And this guy is gonna to have to go in a different spot. Everything's gotta get moved and anyway, for moving on the paved stuff, it's going to be a lot easier if these two tyres are slightly higher, I can pivot a little bit better. Um, a bit of an update from the last Argo episode. This little buffer mount that I added, it's gone on there quite firmly. That's looking very good. So I'm happy with that. I haven't tested that in anger yet. So, um, we need to get up here and find my air line that runs along the roof. Pull that down and get our air hose out here and air up some tyres. So let's go do that. I might even switch to the GoPro for that one. One other thing I'm gonna carry with me, this is the tube sealant stuff. That's gonna go for those tires, but I have a bottle of this stuff for standard tires. I'm probably gonna put a bit in each of these tires at some point, um, just in case I get an accidental puncture in the field. Um, it should self seal, at least enough for me to get home. And at five PSI, it should be pretty easy. Um, this steel weld stuff's got nothing to do with the Argo, that's all for the Land Rover. It's got a wiper that's fallen off. I need a temporary fix until I can get new wiper arms in, which coming from the UK are probably going to take three or four months at this point. So I need to wipe some rain off my windscreen in the meantime, so that's what that's for. Let's go and get our airline and our GoPro. Alright, the perceptive among you may notice that the camera angle has changed along with a few other things, including my voice, the time of day and everything. That's because I had a couple of visitors show up and they needed four hours of laser cutting done. So uh, I've been busy. I've got one tire done, but I haven't done the rest yet. So let's try it out. Now, I have this pressure gauge, which goes from zero to 20 PSI, and this one that starts at 10. Now, my first tire was at about half a PSI, so it is definitely low. Um, so I'm going to pump it up till this just lifts off the bottom, and then I'll check it with this. Alright, so where are we with this? We look like we're about five, six, we're nearly seven PSI. We're about right there. So, basically when that other one starts to recognize pressure, it's about 7 PSI, or nearly 8. Alright, so I've let the front and rear tire down. Let's see if I can find another viewfinder here. I've let my front and rear tires down to 5 psi and the center two to 7. 
Now I've got to go around and do all the same on the other side. So uh, you'll see me around there. In fact, I might do that off camera. Okay, so we've got our tyres at the right pressure. These two are at seven on the front and the rear are at five. Why that's important, the perceptive among you again may notice the rear tyre is off the ground a tiny little bit. Now, what that means is because this is a skid steer, when you pull back and turn, these front and rear tyres don't make as heavy contact with the ground, or not at all, on nice flat grassy surfaces. That means it can pivot more easily and in a smaller circle, and crucially, it doesn't tear up the grass. As you probably see, there are some marks here from me doing this a lot. Um, should make the landlord a little happier. We do at some point need to work out the drain on the con air conditioner condenser there too, because it makes working here a real pain in the ass. So, um, we need to get this guy out, and we need to get the trailer in, and we need to get that trailer out. So, <laughs> not necessarily in that order. So, let's figure some things out. I might even get a bit of rope and just use the Argo to tow that out. Uh, or maybe even the winch. We'll find out. Um, so, yeah. Let's get the GoPro onto that mount. Fire this thing up and we'll move some stuff around. Note to self, weedless prop versus plastic flashing on the house. Not a great, uh, not a great idea. I forgot that that was hanging out. I might actually take that off because that, uh, that is not the first time that's happened. Yeah, I can see how it's happened. It actually grazed across the side of that. Um, but that is some strong pole. <laughs> that's not bent at all. Yep, no, it's fine. All right. Accidents happen when you go, she'll be right. Anyway, we're out. Now I'm gonna move that other trailer out and get this one in. Now actually, they do warn you in the manual about uh, taking sharp corners and being aware of your surroundings. Now, we have gotta move this trailer out. Um, this will be interesting. It's fairly nicely balanced, so I think I can just pick it up with one hand, push my hip on it while I carry this thing. There you go, I can push a trailer. It'll be interesting when we get to the grass though. Let's see how we go. Up there. There we go. We're on the grass nicely. Alright, now we need to figure out how to get the other trailer in there. It's a bit heavier. Although I've emptied both those jerry cans. Um, there's still a bunch of tools in there. Crucially, they're the tools I'm going to need to take with me when I go to pick up the other rover and um, you'll see an episode just on that anyway a bit of a surprise to my financial manager so you know what I might take all the extra weight out of that put the tools over here then I'll push that trailer so let's go do that now it's worth noting that I'm only able to do most of this because I had my infusion a couple of days ago and I feel really good and strong for a few weeks before it wears off let's go and get these tools
All right, so as it turns out, I've already taken the tools out, but I did have one important piece of equipment that we do need to take. Occasionally we might stuck on the, be stuck on the side of the road without anywhere to take a crap. So I've got a folding toilet seat that accommodates a bag. That's definitely coming with us. Let's try and get this trailer over. Tight cornering. This jockey wheel doesn't help things. A few of you might have a go at me for doing this by hand and not with a vehicle. Let me show you why. There's really no space to spare in here. And crucially, I can lock it up around the veranda post. Here comes my apprentice to say hello. She's heard me doing YouTube videos. She's probably heard the Argo going and wants in. So, we'll get the apprentice helping in a minute. I need to take a break, I'm a bit breathless. Now the other side's locked, I think you're going to do that one. That's okay. Okay. Cool. Alright. Argo is secure. Rover is messy and disorganized. We will fix that. I need to find a temporary solution to get stuff out from under there. Now, I have plans to make a drawer that I can pull out and all the stuff will come out with it. That's probably not going to happen by the end of the week with everything that's going on. So, I'm probably going to make a stick with a hook on the end so I can reach up under there and hook stuff and pull it back out. Um, I've also got to pull these Ryobi batteries off and charge them um, because one of the things I am taking with me is my rattle gun with a 27mm socket for undoing wheel nuts because screw using a tire lever on the side of the road or a wheel brace. I need to clean all the bedding. I need to pull out my cooling vest and freeze it. I need to get the gas soldering iron and gas it up. Uh, I need to take out spare camera bits because I'm not as likely to need them on the trip. Although usually when I do these trips, I get roped into fixing stuff 
on the road and that usually covers some of our costs for things so we might do that um, GoPro camera is pretty right or GoPro helmet's pretty right I need to fix that or no I don't need to fix it I just need to charge on my GoPro batteries um, I've got some steel cable and a big fat padlock I'll lock that down camper trailers out in the open that's nice this guy's got to come all the way forward that one's got to come in behind it because that's taken the apprentice to school on the Monday morning that I'm gonna set up temporarily so we can load some essential supplies into it um, if you haven't seen before that's a number five military trailer but underneath the stock canvas there's a folding semi hard sided camper in there um, and the canvas on the top forms the roof of that so I need to peel that off check that it's not moldy clean everything out pack some stuff in there that we need uh, because my financial manager is going to be staying in that on the first night and in the ambulance on the second night um, I don't know what's going on there uh, my apprentice is calling for me but yes we will put some footage in for this soon in a minute let me go check out what the emergency is okay we're around this side of the vehicles now the emergency was my apprentice couldn't put enough TNT in a Minecraft map and her computer froze so she was sneaking onto my Ryzen 9 3950X with 64 gig of RAM and a X570 SSD. She was onto that to see if she could beat the record and couldn't figure out the password. Because I changed it because little genius remembers 20 digit passwords from two years ago. So she's got an identic memory like my late brother had. It's a problem. She also cracked a hotel safe with nothing but a toothbrush at age of two. So uh, I'm working hard to stay one step ahead of her. Anyway, when you get this Argo locked up, um, and I'm gonna look at the tire goo as well, or tire slime. So actually, let's talk about that. We've got some in here. This stuff, now this stuff is designed for tubed tires. There is a formulation for um, standard airless or tubeless tires, which I have in the storage locker in here which will open up later um, maybe not on camera anyway my plan is to put like a half a tube of this in every one of the tires in the Argo so that if I have a flat I can pump a bit more air in and get myself home um, and it should sort me out fairly well these are not cheap tires um, they're expensive that's what I was gonna say now I, I thought I had bent the tube on this smashing it into the house um, I have not. It was just the bracket that shifted. I'm very happy about that. All right, um, but you know, not the end of the world. We would have done something about it. I'm gonna have to put some tail lights in here one day. What else are we gonna do? We're gonna lock our Argo up. So, with the exception of a low pressure tire valve, that's, ah, that's what we have to do. I knew there was something else that I was gonna talk about and I was wasting time on camera. The anchor. Now, this we've got to do some thinking about how we're going to attach this. Now, traditionally on a boat, you'd attach this probably to the bow so that when the current pushes you along, it faces you into the current and not something stupid like broadside and tries to fill you up with water. Now, the problem in this vehicle is that the, it's nose heavy in the water. Now, especially with me in the front, um, this little battery here does tend to offset the balance a bit, but I still don't want to be leaning over the front with the risk of falling in the water to get to the anchor. And given the hydrodynamics of this vehicle, they're reasonably similar in the front and in the back. So I'm thinking it's probably sensible for me to attach the anchor somewhere to the back here so that uh, I can easily get to it to pull it out. And typically when I'm in the water, I'm sitting around in the back here. so that might be actually better so i think i've got a little bit of rope kicking around that might do this um so let's go find that rope all right i was about to crack open my awesome roller telstra rope and i found a roll of this stuff that i've already used um i use that for mooring and i have a big roll of it under the seat somewhere so we might just use that let's uh, figure this out Now, there's a bit of a sharp burr in here that I would like to do something about. I probably should get a shackle on there at some point. But, um, yeah, let's do this. It should 
up. It might grate through there eventually. So I'm gonna have a crack at a fancy knot. If you can't tie knots, tie lots, guys. But for this one, uh, how are we gonna do this? I think we're gonna go through another time just to give it another shot to hold on. Not really an approved knot. Not. Uh, I hope that should stop some of that. Well, it probably won't. What we'll do in the future is, uh, probably before we lose this anchor, <laughs> is we'll uh, do something about that on the sharp casting edge in there. Now, yeah, from here, I don't really want this coming off anytime soon, so I'm going to do an inline granny knot, which is probably going to be something I'm going to swear at in the future. But that should just stop it coming off pulling back through. All right, so I've got our anchor on. Where to connect here is interesting. I can reach as low as this, as the bung plugs and stuff when I'm in the back, but I'd like it ultimately a little bit uh, more accessible. Hmm, I should have a think about this, but I think I'm gonna go through there at least. And we might put a, just a little carabiner clip up here, up high here and um, hang the rope off that when I'm in use. That way I can just pull it from over the back. But we're gonna unroll all this rope first and then tie it on. Now, in terms of the knot tying, which I know for a fact I'm gonna cop flack for in the comments section. I'm normally actually not too bad at knots. Today I'm in a bit of a CBF mood, so I've done a dodgy knot. Um, what is actually gonna happen with this is what I've done before. I'm actually gonna get like a carabiner clip or something along those lines. I'm probably gonna actually crimp that on. Um, this is only temporary rope. Um, I don't know how well it'll do with the job, but it gives me an anchor. People can't complain. So yes, this is messy. This is temporary. It's gonna come off very soon. And yes, you're gonna argue, why didn't I do it properly the first time around? Well, this is getting parked for a couple of weeks. So <laughs> it's probably gonna go get ripped off before I even get into the water. So don't stress yourselves too much about that. Um, by all means, give me flack in the comments, that's fine. It'll only cause me to lose sleep. That's, you know, there's nothing unusual for me. So um, I will keep Telstra rope on board. I've got another roll of that stuff under the seat. I usually use that for mooring off to like jetties and stuff if I happen to find myself there, which is rare. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna roll up this rope and keep it in the back. I could just throw it in there in a tangled mess because everything else is gonna get left in a tangled mess for a while. Yeah, let's just throw it in the back. Okay, so I tangled it up around the outboard prop. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm gonna lock this up, but I, crucially, I'm not gonna show how it's locked on video, just because it makes it a little easy for people that do know me and where I am, should they have the inclination. It makes it pretty hard to steal then. Um, this thing is sat tracked, so it's also pretty hard to steal. But I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that either. I already have in previous videos. Um, so yeah, where are we up to here? I think at this point, um, because of my current state of health, I'm probably not gonna get out on this one before I go away. So I think I'll cut to some footage of me cruising around this previously that I haven't actually aired yet. Um, and maybe a mix of some, some clips that I probably have in other videos. I'll give you a bit of a run on this guy and see how you like it. I'm thinking about starting with a bit of video where I just passed some European guys that were fishing and had gone out on the water and had to squeeze my way between their fishing lines. So I think I'll start there and then we'll go from that. See you after the clips. All right, so nice European family out there shifted fishing rods for me. That was very kind of them. Managed to navigate my way between a couple of them and we're back out. So we're out on the water. And it is dead, dead, dead calm here today, so I'm gonna do some of the return trip via the water. Let's see how far my uh, little outboard gets me. I'm doing all right with a 54 pound electric outboard. Not the fastest thing on the planet, but we make it. So yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a slow trip. Probably a little boring. 
but uh, I'm mostly trying to avoid all these snags and crap up here. All right, so went back to base and I've come out off the shore a little bit. Got my big magnet. Time to do a bit of magnet fishing here. I'm not sure how high that camera angle is, but I'm just bobbing along the bottom. It's not very deep here. It's like about a meter or so. Not a huge issue if I fall in, so I've ditched the life jacket because I can literally stand up off the bottom here. And I've got uh, a trolley motor at about speed setting two. I'm just trolling my way out here. We can see the puffs of dirt up here as I'm trolling. Just trying to keep this so it goes in a nice flat pattern.